Welcome to the Green Wisdom Health Podcast with Dr. Stephen and Janet Lewis, where you will learn about natural solutions to common ailments. And now, here are your hosts, Dr. Stephen and Janet Lewis. Hello, and welcome to this week's edition of the Green Wisdom Health Show. I'm Janet Lewis. And I'm Dr. Lewis. And a Happy New Year to you guys, our first show of the year since uh, the new season. We were uh, gone for a little while because of the holiday and traveling and have a whole lot of information to share with you again. Uh, first off, hope you guys had a wonderful new year. We managed to get sick during the new year for ourselves with the flu. And, uh, you know, we're always talking about virus and how wonderful it is. And it literally saved our lives. So, uh, virus, it works. Uh, had the flu for one full day because I took virus it every few hours and, uh, and then it was gone. So very grateful for that. We still have a little bit of a residual cough remaining from it, but not the flu. So, um, Anyway, we are going to educate people today about losing weight because this time of year, that's what everybody wants to do. They want to be on a diet. I've seen all kind of uh, posts come through on all the social medias about the different diets are getting ready to start. And uh, some of them are not informed very well about what they need to be doing or why they're doing it or what may be causing them to gain weight in the first place. So Dr. Lewis is going to educate us a little bit today about getting real with your diet. So with that being said, Dr. Lewis, he has his voice. So um, sort of we'll uh, (laughs) we'll start talking to you a little bit about the different kinds of diets and what may be the best route for you. Yeah, I'm full of opinions. So let me go back to the flu thing. And, and I, I've had many people on other podcasts ask me, well, it, you know, isn't what you do an alternative to medicine? And I said, well, it, it's an alternative if it makes you healthier and you don't need medicine. But I like to think of it as more complimentary. And it's been years and years and years since I've gotten the flu. And Janet said, oh, was, you know, we have the flu. And I, me being the brilliant man that I am, immediately made her wrong. I apologize, honey. I told her she was wrong, and it's like she was really right. It's just that it didn't kick my butt so bad that I thought I had it. It's like, yeah, I had the aching and the hallucinations at night and uh, the horrible headache, but it really didn't kick my butt and keep me from going ahead and functioning, so I didn't think I had the flu, but looking back at it, I did. We were still able to drive all the way across uh, Texas New Mexico and Arizona with it. So we weren't completely down. <laughs> Into Nevada and back to Arizona through uh, California um, and back, you know, trying to outrun some of the cold weather and slick roads. So the fact is, no, it didn't stop the flu, although we go years and years and years and years between getting it. But we had a higher immune system and the ability to get over it much more quickly. So, you know, that's the point of taking all these supplements and eating a little bit better. As far as diet, um, I have a lot to say, and people say, well, what about this diet? What about that diet? What about that diet? It's like, oh, good Lord, you're overthinking it. If you would just eat real food, and people are famous for being in denial, they say, but I eat good. And I'm I'm sitting there thinking, well, you can't be five foot one, 250 pounds and lie to yourself about eating good. When I get sick or overweight, I know that I did it with my diet. But we have a different perception about what eating real food is. And so I'm going to go over all kinds of things and I'm going to go down the rabbit hole as Larry from Lubbock, you know, talks about. Uh, sorry, I missed your call the other day. Um the food pyramid has been trying to kill us forever. And Janet, I think, is going to mention some diets. I've got some uh, notes over there for her. And one of the diets is the DASH diet. And, you know, that's for uh, being antihypertensive. I don't really like that diet because it says to eat up to 14 servings of grain per day. And you know that I'm not a big fan of grain. I think the best thing you can do with grains is make a good beer out of it. And even that, they have gluten-free beer now, although I've never gone back for beer number two. I've never had one that tasted good that was gluten-free. But the food pyramid, the way it's written, is killing us. And a better food pyramid 
The base of the pyramid, in my opinion, should be greens, colored vegetables, coming up to protein. You know, I'm a big fan of the Atkins Paleo Primal Keto type diets. Then there should be just massive and massive amounts of purified water, so you're not getting the chlorine and fluorine in it. Then fresh fruits, but now you have to be careful with the fruits because you've got to understand that fruits are really hybridized, so they're much more uh, full of sugar, fructose, than they used to be. And you can eat fruit and get fat because of the fructose consumption. I think we should uh, get away from fructose, even if it comes from fruit. Because the number one source of calories in America is fructose, which is usually high fructose corn syrup. Folks, you can't consume hardly any of that and lose weight. Uh, And then there should be omega-3 fats. You should eat lots and lots and lots of the cold water fish. We take a lot of the good fish oil. And folks, there's a big difference in good versus normal Uh, Then uh, going up the pyramid should be herbs and spices. And then, you know, I think organic teas and coffee, things like that. And we do eat as organically as we can or free range. Uh, There are things you can do on top of the pyramid like dark chocolate. Uh, That doesn't include Snickers, which is my favorite candy bar, but I don't do it every day. Actually, I rarely do it. Uh, So you have to understand that agriculture has a huge role in obesity, and that's inflammation. If you're eating grains, think mostly wheat, um, it's not only 4 to 40 times more gluten, but it also has so much glyphosate. And, you know, Monsanto's rightfully so getting their rear end kicked. And now they've discovered all of a sudden, oh, my God, uh, glyphosate or Roundup's uh, Con, you know, contributor to cancer. Well, we've known that for years. Now they're just now proving it in the courts. Uh, basically, if you avoided corn, soy, and wheat and just went to good vegetables and greens, uh, water, good clean proteins, which I, I hope to talk about, but if you just go to that, it would help a lot. And I've read literally dozens and dozens and dozens of different diet books. I'm not that anal, you know, I don't want to get that persnickety. It's like, oh, good Lord, just hit the gist of it and go on. And I'm not really overweight. Um, so yeah, You can quit eating and lose weight. <clears throat> we realized that while we were gone. On, uh, we were gone on a trip with food all around us, and we both managed to lose six pounds. Fasting is good, although that was a little bit more of a forced fast. <laughs> And there's even books written and many, many good research articles about if you eat half as much, you prolong your life. And I think that's a good thing. Some people say, well, yeah, you live longer. It feels like you're living longer because you can't eat. I, Janet and I eat less than most people. And I think that's the first thing you can do to be healthier and lose weight because I've seen people eat a healthy diet but eat so much that it made them fat. I know that's a bad word, fat, but um, really you you have to make real choices. Get off of your grain for a while and see what happens. Get off anything that's made of soy. Get off corn, which is hidden in so many different things, in high fructose corn syrup and corn solids, etc. Yeah, it's uh, very hard to pick good food at fast food restaurants. We did realize that while we were traveling. It was like we wound up eating a whole lot of stuff that was just like meat and vegetables without any bread on it because if you did that for more than one day, you're you're going to feel horrible. You're not going to lose weight. And then Janet found this uh, really nice grocery store. I didn't go in it. AJ's uh, Purveyors of Fine Foods, and we found that out in Arizona. I don't know where all they are, but they had some different things that were prepared that was much, much more nutritious, uh, more like our 
I guess Whole Foods or natural grocers. Um, I'm not sure. I didn't go in it, but Janet people in Phoenix it. are a little more into health out there, I believe, than what we are here in East Texas. They were all. They all seem to be a lot older than us, but they seem to be very, very healthy. And part of that's just getting out in the sun and being active. So you know, first of all, eat less, eat better. Uh, the microbiome in the soil and in the human gut is incredibly important in good health, if you really understood the importance of these microbiomes or microorganisms, it would scare you because there are books written about how there's really about 10 times more microorganisms in our bodies that influence us than there are really cells that make us human. Uh, And we have to get it back into the soil and the way our government subsidizes the microbiome is dead in the soil. So that's why you need to get back to your organic or local farmers, because these microorganisms in the soil actually, for example, if your uh, if your soil is deficient in copper and zinc, you have things called mycorrhiza that actually will say, okay, well, I don't have much of this in the soil, but I'm going to make sure I uptake it at a higher degree. So you have actually microorganisms that are more intelligent than humans that's trying to do the right thing. So get back to your local farmers, and there's definitely people that are trying to do that and grow more for themselves and for, for their neighbor. It's worth the money, whatever it costs. Uh, <clears throat> nutrient depletion, which I'll talk about later. Uh, most of our diseases are from poor nutrition that cause inflammation. And I could go on and on and on about that, but I think that's a podcast for another day. Um, I'm going to do another big podcast here in about three weeks with Jack Spearco, the survival podcast y'all should check out. And I hope to get to uh, theories on cardiac disease. And there's, I think, a little truth in all of the theories. And I think that's also true with these diet books. So find a diet book that you like if you want, if you're the type that goes to the detail and will follow the recipes. I'm not. Now, Janet's an incredible cook, but we don't get together and cook very often. And we've got other things to do, but uh, we kind of eat simply. You know, I'm I'm having apples, organic apples with organic uh, almond butter, or we may just eat an avocado. You know, we eat very very simply. Um, so some of the things we'll talk about, uh, you know, I've talked a little bit about what to eat in the food pyramid. So I'd like to, you know, give what not to eat. Uh, it's a fair run, I guess. So you know, I'll I'll poo poo. A lot of the things that we think is food that really is giving us calories, but not nutrition. So I'll go over some of the things. I've got a bunch of notes here. Um, some of these diets promote whole grains. And I tell people, it's, well, yeah, it's a healthier way to kill yourself. Uh, if you will measure blood sugar and then consume, say, einkorn bread, It raises, and that's one of the healthier grains, but it raises your blood sugar, but it does not raise your blood sugar as much as, say, Wonder Bread. Uh, It it Actually, if you do regular bread, it will double your blood sugar after you consume conventional bread, where the einkorn will only bring it up about 30 to 50 percent rather than 100 percent. One of the things that happens, though, and folks, see if this doesn't fit you. When you eat these things that are not good for you, have you ever noticed that you quit eating uh, good stuff because you kind of get hooked on eating more and more of the bad stuff, and then you get to where you can't really think straight? You don't have the mental acuity that you used to have. You don't have the energy except temporarily. And then when you drop, boy, the energy level drops, you know, down to the bottom. And that happens because of the blood sugar spike. And then the liver's very involved and that'll get complicated. But um, blood sugar rise uh, doesn't just happen with 
bread, but it's very, very severe with pasta. And I know, well, people say, well, what about the Mediterranean diet? Okay. Mediterranean diet has a lot of pasta. And if you'll notice, especially over in Europe, they don't have the same genetically modified grain that we do. And you have a much higher amount of the good oils or the good fats. Olive oil, they're they're famous for that. Uh, so you want to think about, there are regional differences. The gluten thing that I mentioned is very, very real. And I have people come in and they cry when I actually say, yes, it's a real thing. And I'll say, did I say something to make you cry? I apologize. And they said, no, you're the first doctor that believed that there is such thing as a gluten in, intolerance. Um, <clears throat> there's there's research that links wheat to schizophrenia. Um, and it's, it's, it's linked to bread. You know that was those studies were done back in World War II, um, and that's because it, it has something in it that. Uh, irritates the guts it, it produces something called, called exorphins and you know this is research folks if you want to read it it's a journal of orthomolecular medicine is one of them then there's journal of or psychiatry journal of science so if we knew this back in world war ii and that's a long time ago why do we still do the bread thing uh, janet and i don't eat a lot of bread and there's there's a reason for it one of the things you will notice, if you really take the time to feed your kids or grandkids correctly, if you can get them off the gluten, the wheat, the soy, the corn, autism in many, many studies go away completely. ADD, ADHD can go away completely just from the elimination of wheat but if you get rid of the corn and the soy and the high fructose corn syrup, what about all these autistic kids? And, and I know there's a lot of controversy about this causes autism and this causes autism, uh, uh, different things. And I'm not sure there's one particular truth. There's usually a little bit of truth in all these theories. But if you just eliminate that and then the body doesn't have to use its energy getting rid of these toxins that you're freely eating, then it can take care of the other toxins that can contribute to that. Other things you should get rid of is sugars, artificial sweeteners, uh, additives. And I hate to say it, folks, but you probably ought to get rid of dairy, too, unless it's the unpasteurized stuff, you know, the, the real stuff that has the good bacteria in it. Well, one of the things you probably need to talk about with any diet, uh, a diet any of them, is only as good as your digestion is. So if you have really poor digestion, which goes back to the trains not moving through like they're supposed to, and then you go do one of these diets that are high in meat, um, you're going to have a really hard time, A, losing weight because you're just going to keep all of it because it won't come through, and then you're going to think the diet doesn't work when it's really about poor digestion. Um, we always tell people that you always need a digestive enzymes and we recommend ortho digest enzyme many times because it, it will help break down the food so that you can assimilate what you're having and your trains run through <clears throat> faster, which means if you've not heard that story, you should be going to the bathroom as many times a day as you eat a meal within 30 minutes to an hour. So if you have issues there, and then, like I said, you add in a bunch of meat and uh, you get rid of the fiber on trying to carry that through. We have many people that wind up with a lot of problems because they they think the diet didn't work and they feel horrible. And we see it on social media. You know, we're part of uh, Drew Manning's keto group. And, and many times you see people on there without gallbladders that are having real issues with uh, processing so much meat uh, because they don't have the ability to break things down. So start with the basics and make sure you're, you've got a good digestive enzyme that's breaking things down. And how do you know if it's a good digestive enzyme? If you get it from us because we've done the research. Yeah, you, you really need one that has ox bile in it because it'll help mimic human digestion to help you break the foods down better. Um, it will speed up. 
it'll speed up the motility of the colon so that things go better. But uh, that's a big one. The other thing is uh, do your lab work. Lab is very much overlooked because, you know, people are used to going to the doctor and not getting much lab because, uh, because the doctor usually only runs one to three panels. And but, they're good people, but they're just frustrated with that system, too. But you may have an issue with your thyroid. It may be your thyroid sluggish and your digestion is slow because of that. So you don't really um, have a reference point for what you're supposed to be like, what's optimal. You know, I would get the basics checked first before you just jumped into something and said, hey, I can't can't lose weight or I just don't feel good. And I'm going to do this diet because it's, you know, if your body's already stressed to start with and you haven't taken care of the, you know, the basic things like lab to see if everything's optimal first, then your diet is not going to to be a success. So, uh, you know, make sure that, you know, on our labs and we do the 12 different panels of labs and we have many people at the first of the year that do their lab because they want to make sure they're where they need to be for the year. And, um making sure everything's optimal, but it checks the three month blood sugar. So we can see, Hey, does that diet need to be one that is very low with uh, the glycemic index because you have too much sugar anyway? Um, is your digestion working right? We can see that on a metabolic panel. We can see five different parts of your thyroid. So we can see, Hey, is that optimal? Because that actually controls digestion. So, um, Liver enzymes, if your liver is overloaded and toxic, the odds are you do a diet, it's not going to get better. You're just going to make it matter. Um, so you'll consider that. Fill out the health survey on our website at greenwisdomhealth.com, and Dr. Lewis can help guide you to what lab would be best for you based on what you're trying to achieve. And we can send you to your local lab to have it drawn so that you're not guessing and, and make sure that everything's ready to go in the new year. You know, that's a good point about the digestive enzymes. Um, there's, and Janet mentioned the glycemic index. There's some good books written on uh, that. I think that's a pretty good thing to follow generally. Uh, I think the other thing that is pretty much uh, left out is probiotics. You know, we push that. And there's books written about that uh, and, and how it relates to uh, gut health and elimination of excess weight. So I'm going to just try to be brief, but hopefully fairly thorough. Uh, what to include on your diet is a lot of good vegetables, massive amounts like broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, onions, Brussels sprouts. Yeah, even if you have to wrap them in bacon. Watercress, arugula, kale, bok, bok choy, radish, turnip, some beans and lentils, and a lot of garlic. Uh, fruits, for the most part, uh, raspberries, strawberries, blueberries, uh, apples, cantaloupe. Uh, some of the other ones are a little bit high glycemic. On the protein, I think it's better if you do the fish that's wild. Uh, you get organic or pasture-raised chicken and turkey and grass-fed beef, uh, sheep and goats for those that you know have those regionally. Uh, for plant proteins and legumes... Yeah, you can get by with some of those, but I think you should throw soy out the window. <clears throat> Fats and oils, um, you if you can get the extra virgin olive oil, organic coconut oil, flaxseed oil, sunflower, and sesame. So if it's corn uh, or canola, throw it out. A lot of nuts and seeds and peanuts are really not included in that. Um Peanuts may not be so bad, but they're just extremely high in uh, pesticides. On the starches and grains, um, yeah, I've got a lot to say about that, but there's a lot of pseudo grains that you can get good nutrition from. So when you replace the wheat, you can put in quinoa, uh, popcorn, Janet and I like it. We do uh, organic, but we don't do it a lot. Buckwheat works real well. Teff, millet, amaranth, and wild rice works much, much better than rye, barley, oats, and regular white rice and sorghum. So, you know, you kind of have to head. 
uh, in that direction, I think, and that, that can make a big difference. And as far as natural sweeteners, you should pretty much stay away from anything. Uh, people say, well, what about honey? It's like, yeah, well, I've got eight beehives, but you don't want to eat honey in large amounts either. Uh, for the cooking with the fats, the high heat oils are usually avocado, coconut, grape seed, and peanut oil. Sesame works. Uh, medium heat is almond, the butter or ghee, olive oil, pe- uh, peanut oil, uh, which is expeller pressed, walnut oil. Janet uses a lot of walnut and pecan oil. Low heat is the hemp, fish oil, flaxseed, uh, olive oil, believe it or not, for low temperature. So don't really cook with it. Uh, So be careful with that and, you know, make sure you're using it correctly. And if it's a low heat oil, it's better just to throw it on your salad and, you know, without it being cooked. Mm. But again, go back to eating half as much. If you start getting uh, the good nutritious vegetables and better meats in your body, you have more nutrition. So you begin to crave less and less and less. And it's easier to cut back. And again, Janet and I eat very, very little. Well, People the, are always asking us, do we want a doggy bag? He's like, no. Right. In the mornings, we uh, we do a product called Glycema Core because it has some um, blood sugar properties to it. It helps you not be hungry. And it also has some protein to it. There's 250 calories uh, per serving. And we have a, a guy that comes in here and gets it. And he goes, that stuff's making me fat because he's been having that with his oatmeal in the morning. <laughs> And we're like, well, you don't have to have the oatmeal. He goes, but that says it's not a meal replacement. Well, it kind of is. If you don't eat a lot, it's enough to get you through breakfast, and then you can have a bigger lunch. That's kind of a good point to throw in here. Some people say calories don't count, and he's he's kind of a little bit over picky and, and worried about it too much. And there was a guy that got in trouble for writing a book called Calories Don't Count. Folks... It's not the calories, it's the quality. If you think the calories out of pancakes, you know, with maple syrup on it's the same as the uh, calories out of broccoli, you're wrong. So calories don't count unless you figure out where they're from. Janet was right. He should have cut the oatmeal out because oats are not really that great for you. Yeah, another grain that makes you gain (laughs) weight. But um, anyway, that's what we do in the mornings, and we do just fine. And then we have a bigger lunch, and then we're pretty full. We don't eat a, we don't eat all the whole big lunch that everybody eats because our stomach has shrunk, and we can't eat it. So if you just give it a little time, you you will start changing the way you want things. But um, I do want to make sure we address a question here that we had from Carl about nutrients missing in our foods. Um, so Dr. Lewis wanted to talk a little bit about why the nutrients are missing in our food. Well, and, and Carl, you know, he's he's a local guy here, a really great guy. And he uh, wanted me to talk about it because he's trying to convince people of this. And he says, one of my classmates who is a medical doctor, I said, well, you know, he's he's busy doing his own thing, too. It's hard to have time to read all this stuff. Even I have time Uh you know, have to slip it between this and this if to have time to read. Uh, the soils in the United States and Canada have lost about 85% of their original mineral content. And that was discovered in 1992. That was the Rio Earth Summit. So 85%. <clears throat> so, folks, you're running on empty. And that's why it's very necessary to supplement to get as good as you can get and uh even even the asian and south american soils were down 76 percent and in africa europe and australia the soils were depleted 74 72 and 55 percent respectively and there's been very very little that's been done about that and that's why you have to go to your local farmers because it's easier to restore the minerals to the soil. You should see me restoring the minerals just our yard in my backyard garden. Uh, and I, yeah, we we get those and we kind of reintroduce them to the soil. 
and it makes for much, much healthier vegetables, what few that I do grow. So there's a micronutrient depletion. That is, it's multiple. It's not just one or two of the minerals. So just assume 85% of all the minerals you're supposed to be getting, you're not getting. And, you know, that's, you know, a lot of these big conferences, there's a lot of research from the United States Department of Agriculture. So that goes on and on and on. That's why you have to supplement if you're going to be healthy. And that's why you continually crave more and more food because your body's trying to get the minerals uh, that's not there. That's a good point. When you have the right nutrition, you're not near as hungry because you've already got the nutrition when you have a good source of it. That's why we eat a lot less than what most people do. I used to think people were cheap and, you know, when they just shared a meal. Now, Janet, and I share a meal many, many times and then don't even finish our half. Speaking of sharing things, please pass this podcast around with someone that you may know that needs the information and the help. And we appreciate you listening to us again this week. And we're glad that we're back and ready to get the new year rocking. <laughs> so if you guys got questions or anything you'd like to hear, uh, shoot Dr. Lewis a question on uh, shooting straight with Dr. Lewis. And we'll be happy to cover that in the next segment and any kind of um input that you might give us for new shows we'd love to hear that as well but good luck with your diets and if we can be a part of anything that to help you achieve what you're looking for with your health please give us a shout hope you guys have a very blessed week once again our show has come to an end but your hope in your health is only beginning If you or a loved one are in need of a different outcome and are waiting for a brighter future, take the first step and go to our website and fill out the health survey. Please don't keep us a secret. If you know someone that could benefit from this podcast, please share this show with your friends and family. You're only one step away from a life worth living.